In this example, we'll find the expected value of a function of two random variables for continuous random variables x and y. So find the expected value of x squared y for x and y with joint probability density function f of x, y is 1 50th over the region x greater than 0, y greater than 0, x plus y less than 10. You can look at this support right here and realize that these are continuous random variables and that's why this is called a joint probability density function. This shaded region right here is the support so that can be labeled script A and the axes here run from 0 to 10 so x greater than 0 is this constraint y greater than 0 is this constraint and that puts you in the uh, first quadrant and then x plus y less than 10 is being below that line so that's how we came up with the support. Now to find the expected value of x squared y we will have a double integral over the joint probability density function so you have 1 50th here and then this x squared y simply gets copied right in here x squared y this will be dy dx because it's triangular I can either go dy dx or I can go dx dy it doesn't matter either way is the same amount of work so the integration strips are running in this fashion the name of this upper curve is y is equal to 10 minus x the name of the lower curve here is y is equal to 0 that is the x-axis so our limits with respect to y turn out to go from the lower curve which is always 0 to the upper curve which is always 10 minus x next thing that you do is where do these strips start they start right over here on the left at x equals 0 so that is the lower limit with respect to x and the last strip is this very short strip right here that is at x equals 10 and so there is the double integral in this particular case I'm not going to put you through the integration details you can do those as an exercise down here there's a lot of white space but the answer here is 100 thirds which is the same as about 33 and 33.33 we'll go with that so the expected value of x squared y if you pick a point uniformly and that's because this probability density function does not involve x and y if you pick a point uniformly in this triangle and you want to know what x squared times y will be on average it turns about turns out that will average 33.33 now if you had some doubts about this 33.33 you can run a Monte Carlo simulation and that's what is done on the next page in this Monte Carlo there is something known as the acceptance rejection technique and here's the way that works here is X here is Y and we label 10 here and 10 here the domain of definition script A was this triangle. But when I generate the, the values in script A, it's not clear how to do this. One of the techniques in Monte Carlo is known as the acceptance rejection technique. And in that acceptance rejection technique, what you can do is you can generate points X and Y that are uniform between 0 and 10. That is points in the unit square then after you generate those points what you can do and we're generating a hundred hundred thousand of these pairs those that fall up here we can reject that's where the name acceptance rejection comes from we can reject all of these point not not use them 
and then everybody that falls down here in the support we can accept those points. So once you have just these points down here which are uniform in script A and by the way the reason you can do uniform is that uh, PDF is 1 50th they're equally likely any anywhere in this triangle then you identify which of those indices correspond to x plus y being less than 10 store those in the vector named index and then just for those values you calculate the average of x squared y divided by the number in there and when you run that five times you get 33.42, 33.28, 33.0, 33.26, These are hovering around our theoretical value 33.33 and because of that we can conclude that the uh, Monte Carlo supports the analytic solution. Notice that this is not from a hundred thousand replications so it is from approximately 50,000 or so because half of them got rejected out here from about 50,000 random variate pairs. And that is the number of replications of the Monte Carlo experiment.